Alondis Williams is too damn cold. So as you probably well know now, the Miami Heat have the most dominant summer league team of all time. So I've kind of been doing this series where I highlight a lot of the players on the team, give you some background on them if you're not familiar, and what I think they could bring to the Miami Heat. So today, I wanted to talk about Alondis Williams because although he hasn't gotten a ton of playing time in the summer league and he's been playing behind guys like Zion Poulin and Isaiah Stevens, he still has several moments that just jump out the page at you. So I feel like he deserved his own video. So as far as the measurables, he is 25 years old, which... In summer league, it's pretty ancient. I hate to say it because, like, in the grand scheme of things, 25 is not old. You can still get much, much better at that age. I still feel like he has a lot of room for improvement. Unfortunately, other GMs and NBA teams in general just don't see it that way. I think that's part of the reason why he can't really you know stay on a roster maybe the reason they don't give him a lot of playing time in the summer league but I, I just don't think that's fair to a lot of these guys in the in the g league in general but he is 6'4 210 pounds so from the guard spot i feel like he's uh he's got okay size does it's not super wirely wiry or anything like that obviously the athleticism jumps out the page at you so for his size, for his frame, I do feel like he, he at least could play in the NBA right now. I don't feel like size is the issue for him. Now, where it all started for Alondis is actually at a small community college called Triton in Illinois. Didn't actually know that about him, but he did play there for two seasons before showing out enough to transfer to Oklahoma, where he spent two seasons there didn't get a lot of playing time i guess wasn't necessarily happy with that so he did spend his final senior season at wake forest in which he actually won acc player of the year so he did get a big opportunity there jumped up from 18 minutes you know a game the year before at oklahoma to 34 minutes a night at wake forest played 35 games for them averaged almost 19 points per game five assists six rebounds 3.6 turnovers which we don't necessarily like to see because the assist -to turnover ratio is not great and that's something that we've been highlighting for isaiah stevens and zion Poulin. they were very low mistake guys in college not exactly the case with alanis williams but he is definitely the best bucket out of those three people by far the overall percentage here is not bad shot almost 51 percent from the field at wake forest but it's the three point percentage that's definitely very concerning he was a 28% three-point shooter on four attempts, and he wasn't any better his years prior. So that's not really what he was known for, at least in college, although I do think he is an improving three-point shooter, and we're seeing that right now in the summer league. He also shot under 70% from the free throw line. Usually, that's kind of where you like to look. You know, when a guy's struggling from beyond the arc, you say, well, if he could hit his free throws, you think he could transfer there. And, you know, as a as at Oklahoma, he did shoot 84%, but that was on one attempt a game. And then when the attempts went up to five at Wake Forest, again, under 70%. From the guard spot, that's not something that you want to see. So I do think that is the reason that Alonis Williams ended up going undrafted after finishing out his super senior season at Wake Forest. But he would actually sign a two-way deal with the Nets where he only played one game and in that one game, he played five minutes and had two turnovers and no points. So not the best debut for Alonis Williams, but that's okay because he would end up on the Nets G League team where he would average 13 points per game before actually being traded to the Sioux Falls Sky Force where his career would really take off there. He actually won most improved player of the season where he jumped from 13 points per game with the Nets all the way to 22 points per game with the Sky Force. It was very efficient as well. 52% from the field overall, but what you love to see is that season with the Sky Force on six three-point attempts per game, Alonis Williams shot 38%. So you love to see that development from him. Even the prior year with the Nets G League team, he also shot 38% and that was on four attempts. So of course he was getting buckets in the G League, actually had a 55-point game for the Sky Force where he was scoring from everywhere, lighting it up from downtown where his form looked really good. You know, I, I think he's a guy that has a nice quick release, decent follow-through, good arc on his shot, and clearly he's worked on that a lot since college. So that's kind of why you see it, you know, pulling over into the three-point percentages 
for the G League where they were very nice. I think he also had like a 42 point game for the Sky Force. So obviously he was lighting it up all over the place. But the thing that I really like to see is that his athleticism still jumped off the page at you. Because yeah, in college, he was super athletic. I saw some crazy dunking highlights from there too. But he's playing against a lot of guys who will never make the pros. So it is very important to see that when he gets to the next level, he still sets himself apart from the rest when it comes to athleticism. And he had a lot of very exciting plays there as well. So basically, he would go from that successful G League season with the Miami Heats and jump back and forth between the actual main Miami Heat team. He was even on a two-way contract at one point. I think checked into like seven games. He, he finally did get a bucket, got an actual NBA bucket. But of course, he never really did much there, but it was limited playing time. So that brings us to where we are today in the summer league, where Alondis Williams is still not getting as much run as kind of I would like to see. Unfortunately for him, it's just a very deep team. We talked about the couple of guards ahead of him and Stevens and Poulin, but you also got guys like Keyshawn Johnson. You had Hame Hawkins play the first two games of, of the Vegas Summer League. You got Khalil Ware, who's been balling out. You got Josh Christopher, who we know has had a lot of moments as well. So it, I almost would like to see Alonis Williams really get some run on a, on a different team where he could truly show everything he has to do. Because in the flashes that he's shown, he, he looks like one of the best scorers in Summer League. One of the most talented. His handle is off the charts. He is shifty as hell. Really reminds me of Terry Rozier in that regard. And obviously the shooting has been pretty, pretty good also. You know, he's, he has a, he's hit a lot of threes and I feel like the percentage is pretty decent for him as well. Now, not super consistent. Let me, let me pull it back a little bit because I do remember his first game in the California Summer League. Alanda shot 0 for 9. But a couple games later, he followed that with a 21 point performance versus the LA Lakers where he shot good from three but was nine of 23 from the field. So my whole point to all this is saying he's had his moments and he's a very skilled scorer that I would like to see get a bigger chance. I should highlight the other parts of his game because actually it's funny enough when he was, uh, you know, when he graduated college, a lot of the scouting reports that I were reading during my research said that he's known as a playmaking guard because We've seen he's got some facilitating chops. He's made a lot of nice reads in the summer league, off the pick and roll, finding guys back door, some nice passes. But I feel like he's transitioned into more of a scorer. But I don't, I wouldn't say he's one dimensional. And I also see him use that that athleticism that he has on the defensive end. We've seen him full court press some guys, intercept some passing lanes and stuff like that. So he's not a one dimensional player. And that is part of the reason that I find it confusing that he's actually not like doesn't get a bigger role in the summer league one and can't stick with an NBA team two because you're talking about a guy that has the athleticism, has decent size, can score the ball, great handle, improving jump shooter, not one dimensional, can play make, can, you know, play some defense. I really wonder why he can't stick with a team. I don't have a great answer for that. And I don't have a great answer why he's not getting more run with the, the Heat team either. Yeah, I, I understand they're deep, but you do feel like he should get some more playing time because I think these moments that he's had has been good enough to at least allow at least allow him to get some more burn. You know, Alondis had a DNP versus Celtics. He had other games where he was only playing like 17 minutes a night so far in the summer league. So that being said, there is still at least one more game because they do play the Toronto Raptors on friday i'm recording this on thursday so if he goes off in that game or doesn't play that's why i haven't talked about it and i do believe if the heat win that game they advance to the playoffs and don't ask me to explain the summer league playoffs to you because as of right now i have no idea obviously like i ain't i ain't researching summer league playoffs because the heat don't usually make it that far in the summer league because they don't care about that stuff but uh i do want to talk about his potential alanis williams you know potential to get on the heat roster this season Again, as I've said in all these scouting reports, Drew Smith is the guy that people want to see cut. I do as well. I want to see that spot go to Isaiah Stevens. But I have I have a, I had a lot of people in my comments clamoring for Alonis Williams. And I get it. The dude is a straight up bucket. But if you look as far as need for what this Miami Heat team needs, then I think they need that facilitator. One. You got a lot of questions about that backcourt between Terry Rozier and, and Tyler Hero. A lot of questions whether they could start. I, I don't think they can. I would like to see a facilitator run that unit. Now, I don't think it can be uh, Isaiah Stevens just because that he'd be so small between him and Tyler or him and Terry. 
but I, at least to have a, a point guard to run that second unit is something that I think is, is they desperately, desperately could use. Even if you were to take one of Terry or Tyler and put them off the benches as, as kind of that lighted up six man, well, now you have a guard that will pass them the ball and can help run the offense a little bit better if the ball sticks with Tyler Hero, for example, which he has a tendency to do. But I mean, I keep saying it. Look at our look at our main guards next season. Terry, Tyler, Duncan Robinson. Those are all scorers. They don't have a great facilitator. They don't have a great defender. And I feel like Alondis Williams is similar in a lot of that regard. Obviously, he can play defense, but I'm just saying he's he's a scorer. Where a guy like Zion Pulling just adds a different, uh, yeah, well, Zion Pulling or Isaiah Stevens, Stevens just adds a different dynamic that they don't quite have. So I don't necessarily expect uh, Alonis Williams to, to get a roster spot, to get that last two way if they were to cut Drew Smith. I don't, I don't know what kind of blackmail Drew Smith has on the front office, but if the front office decides to not care, they'll release Drew Smith and that last spot will likely go to Isaiah Stevens, is my prediction. Because same thing with Josh Christopher, if you didn't see my breakdown on him. He's obviously more of a bucket getter as well. Can play defense just like the rest of these guys. But hey, that, that's why I said this Heat team has an a all-star roster. It's because they got, they're about eight or nine deep with guys that I think could play on an NBA team right now. But that's all I got to say for this video. So let me know y'all thoughts down below. What do you think of Lonis Williams? Do you think it's not fair that he hasn't got some more run in the summer league? Do you want to see the Heat cut Drew Smith and keep him? I'll be reading all your comments, so make sure to leave your thoughts down below. Make sure to like the video too and subscribe because the growth on this channel has been amazing over the last few weeks, and I can't do this without y'all. So I appreciate y'all tuning in, and peace out. Yeah, pull up in the city, trying to get that dead fast. Like, do it on my own, I don't need no dead weight. Like, had to kill them off, yeah, I need a headspace. You know this homegrown bitch don't offend me. Hmm.